Hi YouTube, for today's video, which is going to be a very short video, I'm going to show you how to enable SSH on a Cisco switch. Now in order to put in the initial configuration into the device, we will need a console cable to plug into the device to the console port and the other end obviously goes to your computer. After that, we need to figure out what COM port we can use to communicate to the device. You can go to your system settings, device manager in Windows computer. Under the ports, you can see that my device is using COM port 5. I'm going to take note of that and open PuTTY. You need to change this from SSH, which is the default, to serial, and then change it from COM 1 to 5. Leave the speed as 9600. This is going to be applicable to 99% of the devices that you connect to. Then we can click on open and let me press enter. And here we go. We got console access to our Cisco switch. As you can see, there is no configuration on this device. I'm going to type in no because we want to configure everything manually. Now I'm going to type in enable to be able to access the privilege mode. Now I'm going to type in show IP interface brief in order to see the status of the interfaces. Take note of interface VLAN 1 and gig 0 slash 1. By default in a Cisco switch, every interface belongs to VLAN 1. And in case of gig 0 1, there is no exception. It belongs to VLAN 1 and that's what we want for this tutorial. So let's go to config terminal now and start with the configuration of SSH. First, I'm going to change the host name of the device. Let's change it to switch01. And then next, I'm going to change the domain name, IP domain name command. And then I'm going to say lab.local. Now we should go ahead with creating an RSA key with the command crypto key generate RSA. I can go ahead and press enter here, or I can type in a question mark and complete the command with general keys and then specify the size of the RSA key. I'm gonna go with 1024. You can see the default is 360. It's always a good practice to go with a bigger number, so I'm gonna pick 1024. Uh, depending on the CPU power of this device, it's gonna take roughly around 10 to 20 seconds. Also take note of the fact that the generated RSA key is based on the host name and the domain name of the device. Now we got SSH 1.99 enabled. I'm going to hard code SSH version 2 with IP SSH version 2. Next we will need to define a username and password so that when we connect to the device we can authenticate. I'm going to choose username loopback privilege which is going to be 15 maximum privilege for a user account and then secret i'm going to go with loopback please do not set these username and password on your devices go with something strong and then enable secret which is going to be the same loopback and we got the authentication part almost covered now we need to assign an IP address to interface VLAN 1. I'm going to give it something that is within the range of my local network. Let's take a look at my IP config settings. IP config. And then here you can see that this is the range. I'm going to copy that and try to pick something that is not taken. Subnet mask is a slash 24. Next, I'm going to try and see if I can ping that device. Let's do that. First one is going to be missed because of ARP. And here we go. We got response from the interface VLAN 1. So we look good. Now, as the final step, we should go to global config mode and go to line VTY 0215. I think this device is limited to 15 VTYs. So I'm gonna go into line VTY 0215. I'm gonna say login is gonna be local, which means the device is gonna consult with the local database for authentication. And then I'm gonna follow that up with transport input SSH. I can also specify Telnet but in this case, I'm gonna just say SSH only. 
And that's pretty much all. Let's connect to the device. I'm gonna open another party session. This time I'm gonna say SSH port 22, click on open, accept, and then I'm gonna put in the user credentials, loop back. Here we go, I'm connected to the device using SSH. Show SSH is showing my user, actually my session. I can duplicate that and use the same user password again. And let's do show SSH. I'm using two VTVIs for my connection to the switch, two users basically. And that's gonna conclude our video for today. I hope this video has been useful to you guys. If it was, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below. And have a good one.